What's up guys, my name is Khan and we're back today with more Scrap Mechanic and today we're going to look at magnets and the magnet motor and I built a magnet motor a while ago, this is it here actually and um, I mean it's pretty self-explanatory Yeah, it's not, it's not great so I decided to take that motor apart and I removed the casing and this is it without the casing and surprisingly it's not laggy without the casing. Um, but again, I built this a while ago and one thing I noticed, the magnets are all set to just this un unnamed like magnet configuration. So we've obviously, we've got a spinning shaft here in the middle where essentially when we turn this on, we're powering all the magnets in the middle to be constantly on. And then this sensor on the back wall there controls these outer magnets when that little encoder plate is in front of it. Now, a uh, few major issues with this right off the bat, the encoder is lopsided. Uh, we weren't using color sensors at this time for whatever reason. I don't know if color sensors were a thing or not, but we weren't using color sensors. And so the encoder wheel is lopsided, which is why the shaft kind of vibrates. You can see it doesn't really spin very smoothly. It kind of vibrates and jostles around. And I think that's why this one explodes like crazy. So the first thing I want to do is I want to take this. I just want to hook it up to the, uh, the dyno that we've got. And, oh, it's attracting itself to this magnet. Oh, I thought you were off. Oh no, you're going to have some magnets that are on. That's right. All right, let's delete this. Let's just, yeah, magnets attract each other. That's a problem. But anyway, we're going to hook it up to the dyno. Let's see what it can do. It's probably going to be pretty garbage. I can't imagine it will have any torque. So here's the thing with magnets, right? In real life, which is kind of cool. I work a little bit with magnet DC motors, mainly with like RC stuff, and we use brushless motors. Now there's really two types of motors. There's brushed and brushless in terms of DC stuff. And I just realized I welded this wrong. I've got to weld this first. But anyway, the way it works with pretty much any motor is that you have a rotor and a stator. And the stator is the stationary part. The rotor is the part that spins. And with brushed motors, you have it so that the permanent magnet is on the housing of the motor. So it would be as if these motor, like the outside was always a magnet, just like a permanent bar magnet type thing. And then the inside has an armature winding of copper that you provide electricity to. And that creates a magnetic field, which then opposes the permanent magnets on the outside. And that's what causes it to spin. Uh, and with the DC motor, it's pretty self-explanatory how that works. Now, with a brushed motor, you have the windings on the inside and you have little brushes that basically conduct the power into the inside of the motor to charge up the inner winding. On a brushless motor, we do the opposite where we have the windings on the outside, the permanent magnets on the spinning bit, and we sort of spin it that way using magnetics. This one would be more like a brushless because we're turning on the inside and then we're kind of, I guess, charging the outside. But really, this isn't like a magnet motor at all. We're not creating an electric field with a real motor. We're creating an electric field through that winding of copper and the magnet just naturally opposes that electric field. We're not exactly doing that. We're still sort of doing this like a traditional scrap mechanic piston motor where basically we're timing the magnets to be on at specific times. And to be honest, I have no idea how this works. I have a feeling this should be like north magnets all around the outside and then one side north one side south and if we time them right we could pull the south side down while we push the north side up and that would cause it to spin but anyway let's hook this into the dyno i can't imagine it's gonna be very good um it does generate some speed though so let's just let it get to sort of like a steady state 133 RPM ish 132 133 now the thing is I don't think this is gonna apply any torque at all And the reason why is the only torque it can apply is the physical opposition of the magnets like the the invisible magnetic force There's no physical connection like this is just a free-floating bearing on a free-floating motor So I feel like magnet motors if we could really make them work They'd be good for speed, but they would be terrible terrible for torque um, but of course this one's terrible for both 132. So let's just switch this over to uh, speed at peak power max torque max power And let's start this thing. out. It's gonna be bad max torque 103 Wow, that is it 103 newton meters one horsepower Is it actually one horsepower or is that just the lowest number that they can show that is that is really the question? That is so funny. All right, let's just you know what? Let's just reset this thing. Let's set it to clear it Let's set this to current power. Max torque, yeah, torque, uh, what, current torque. There we go, does it tell me? It won't tell me current torque until I actually start it, right? Let's see. Yeah, it, it barely even pulls one horsepower if it does. I don't think it actually generates one horsepower. I think it's it rounded itself up. I think it was less than, less than one horsepower. Well, that is just, that's a sad, that's a sad motor. All right, so we've set the bar really low. I mean, really really low what do we have to do we have to do 130 
what's current speed, right? 100 and oh, it jumps. Okay, so it does go up to like 199 RPM at the high end, but it is wobbling, so it's it's not really it's not really consistent. And it you know it averages it at 130, 150. Okay, well that's interesting. All right, so let's just leave that running. Let's make a better magnet motor. Um, let's go a little bit further away here. And I want to try and make this... Okay, so let's actually look. I want to use the same spec as this one. So this uses eight sets of two magnets around the outside. So we're going to do the same and then four magnets on the inside. So I want to use the exact same configuration and just see if we can make a better motor using a few simple, like, you know, tricks, I guess, to just make a really, really clean um, sort of system. So the first thing we're going to need to do is, of course, make a motor shaft. So let's just do that here right down the middle. Now we're going to want the encoder wheel on the back of this shaft as well and a ring of sensors around this way, right? We're going to want all these to be color sensors, which means they probably have to be level fives. And these are going to read our encoder wheel, and that's going to hopefully give us a north and south magnet. So we're going to do all north around the outside, and then in the middle, we're going to do part north and part south. We'll just have these all read color mode. They'll just read white. That's fine. So we can make our encoder wheel. Now we might need to do a little bit of an offset on our encoder wheel. Um, so we're going to make sure we put an extra bearing in there. So here's going to be our encoder wheel. We'll do something like this. I don't think I, we should probably make this out of wood, right? To make this as light as possible. Ah, you know what? A little bit of weight might not be the worst thing in the world because a little bit of weight will kind of act like a flywheel and help us just keep spinning through those positions. So we'll do something like this. We'll put some wedges on it. I don't know how the collision of wedges affects this if we're too close to the bearing. I feel like I see people do this all the time, and it's fine. So that's what we're going to do. So anyway, we'll configure that as much as we want. And then we'll put another bearing here. This bearing we're going to hook into a controller that we can offset then from these magnets, which we're going to put in the middle. So we're going to put a couple of magnets like this and a couple of magnets like this. These ones will be north, and these ones will be south. So we're going to power that up, and that whole thing will spin. Um, yeah, and then the shaft output is off this end, right? Like we just, uh, where do I, I have a pipe. There we go. So this is our shaft output would be off that. And if we lock this with a controller off the frame, this bearing here, that'll let us offset this encoder wheel from the magnet positions if we have to. I'm not sure if we have to or not yet, but like, you know, just in case. All right, here we go. Perfect. So everything is wired up. Now, uh, we need a controller. So this is where we get a level five controller. Perfect. And we can just, you know what? We'll just make this part of, um, let's actually just attach this real quick. Let's just make this part of the frame, right? It can just be, there we go. It's part of the frame. Perfect. And that controller we can use to offset that disc if we have to. So this is the fun part. Ideally, when we turn this on, all we have to do is turn on the center magnets. And when we turn off the center magnets, the motor will stop having power. So let's just grab a switch, right? And then the rest of the magnets are just driven basically from the uh, the sensor position. So there we go. So that's, that's that. And then, oh boy, how are we gonna figure this one out? Okay, and then I think we just wire each sensor up into each set, and then we color the wheel accordingly based on what sensors we want lit at what time. So that's what we're going to do. Let's just wire all these up real quick. So theoretically, if we want the magnet to spin in any direction, when we're in this position here, we would need this bottom one on. Because if this bottom one is on, it would attract the south towards it and push away the north. So that means this one could be on. This one could be on as well for this moment in time because it's still pulling the south down towards it. And this one could be on because it's pushing the north away. Right? I mean, that spins so much faster. It's also an even weight. That looks really good. Oh man, we gotta hook this up to the machine. And then we gotta see, now we gotta, now this is where a dyno comes in. Now we gotta hook it up to the machine and try it out and try different configurations of things. Oh boy. I mean, I, this also needs, I feel like it needs a stabilizer on this side of things. So let's just build that in. All right, let's hook it up. So this one, what's it do? It's been running for a while. The average speed is 150 RPM. All right, let's just run a torque test. 110 max torque, zero horsepower, 83 Newton meters of torque. This thing is terrible. This thing is actually, it's actually terrible. All right, let's, let's remove that. That's the old version. 150 RPM 
no torque, basically. 80 newton means of torque. Might as well be negligible. Just an absolute useless piece of equipment. Here we go. Let's hook up this magnet motor V2. This looks so much better. The old one, too, I think it only worked by repelling. I'm not sure because I didn't, like, look at all the connections or the timings or anything, but I'm pretty sure my old one was just repelling, whereas this one is now repelling and attracting. It's using the north and the south. You can see, look at how many magnets are activated. Um, I don't know why so many are activated, but here we go. All right, right off the bat, look at the... Sp oh my god, look at the speed. 600 RPM? And I feel like we could tweak the timing and make that even faster. I feel like I feel like we could really we could really make that better. It's jumping to 970. 1000 Okay, hold on. Let's See, this is where we can tweak some stuff. Oh my god, it's it's just jumping all Oh, that's on current. Let's put it to average. It's jumping all over the place though. 580. All right, what if I adjust this timing by like, I don't know, 15 degrees? Did that make it better? It went up to 680. 700 See this is this is where you can do all the cool experiment. It's got to skip though. There's something it doesn't like 30 degrees No, see now it's now it's on too much This is like the really hard part of figuring out encoder positions and I feel like there's some some guys in the piston engine community It's kind of the same thing you deal with with piston engines, but this is dealing with magnets instead. see this is okay 30 degrees here let's um Let's move the shaft until we can get it right to where one sensor would activate. So right where this corner sensor activates, let's move it to that position. So what would that be? Is that 30 degrees? 30 degrees, it's not activated. Okay, what about 25 degrees? Okay, 25 degrees, this corner is activated. Okay, and if that corner is activated, see, that's going to oppose this movement. So now we need to rotate the shaft to adjust. So this needs to be at like 15 degrees. And it's still like in line. You can see what you see what I'm talking about. Like if these magnets are activated, this north isn't really going to generate much force in this direction. It's more going to push that, which we don't want. So if anything, we need to go the opposite direction, actually, like negative 15 degrees. So now this north would definitely be opposing that north. It would be attracting the south. This north over here and this north over here are both still good, pulling that south down. Okay, so that's perfect. So now if we rotate past the position. No, nope, other way. This is all going to make sense at some point. We're just trying to optimize the speed. So I'm trying to see, now we need to see when this corner turns off, how close the south magnet is. Because ideally, we want the south magnet to be past, like not past, see that's still technically pulling the south magnet down, right? Because the south magnet, if we draw a line straight out from the south magnet, it's still, see what I mean? It's still above the north, kind of. I, I mean, it's getting close. What if we go five more degrees? It's See, now this might be an issue. Okay, now it's off. Off, like, right past it. What about there? It's still off. Okay. This might be the perfect position, actually. Negative 15 degrees might be the set. Okay, let's try it at negative 15. Let's see what we can get. Turn this bad boy on. Let's reset the system. Here we go. Get that RPA. Ooh, it's lower! What? I wouldn't... Wow! I wonder if there's, like, a lag... We're not accounting for... There's probably a lag in, like, the scrap mechanic physics symbol. Like, between, like, the, the signal. Sorry, not the symbol. The signal that comes from the, the sensor to the motor. And I bet you we're not accounting for that lag with the offset of the controller. All right, so hold on. Let's uh, let's turn this off. Let's set this to like maybe 10 degrees. Let's go down in five degree increments back towards zero and see if we get a better speed. This one already goes up to 500. Okay. Interesting. Let's go down a little bit more. Let's go down another five degrees. Turn that. Okay, that one went physically bad. Reset. Here we go. Try again. Now it's, now it's noisy and banging everywhere. But that's, that's not good. Okay, interesting. Zero. Zero's quiet. 550. I can't believe how cool this is that you could actually just say, look at that, seven on, wow, there's gotta be a delay. There's gotta be a sensor delay with a tick coming out, and that's what's generating, alright, let's, let's do one more... 
Again, we're just checking for RPM right now. I don't think the torque is going to make a difference. I think the torque is going to be almost the same because just the number of magnets. This is 660. These things are still pretty pathetically slow, to be honest. Or right, we'll hook a tremble gear up in between these and see what happens. But like for now, is this honestly the best configuration? Six, 700. Averaging 700 for a second there. It's still got a little bit of a weird... This thing is so silly. All right, let's try like just obnoxious. Let's go 20. I think 15 degrees. And that's weird because like looking... Oh, maybe, maybe not. Looking at it, it looks like it should be, you know, negative 15 degrees. Okay, well, this one just goes into the 8s. That's interesting. There's got to be, like, a huge delay. I love this, though. This is great. 6, 600, 700, 800, 860, average. Wow. Okay. Go to 30. Again, all we're doing is rotating that timing wheel so the sensor's triggered at a different time. Look at that, 900s. Up in the 9s. Wow, that is so crazy. Let's go to 35. It's great that we have a device like this that lets us actually just physically look at it and be like, boom, this is better. So, see, that one's 1,000. It peaked 1,000 average. Unbelievable. Literally, with just tuning the encoder wheel, we've changed it by, like, double the RPM. This is averaging 1,000 RPM now. This is awesome. Actually awesome. Every time I hit this white button, by the way, I reset the whole board. That's why I'm doing it. So it resets the whole average to zero. But we're going to find the, uh, the bet. Oh, my God. It's still going up. I can't believe that that's the offset. 40 degree offset. 1100 rpm all right let's keep going the particle effects are going everywhere but let's just keep going i mean i don't care we'll keep going until it starts going back down we're basically gonna make a curve 1100 let's go oh oh that it only peaked at 11 it 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 oh peaked at 1100 average okay it's obviously jumping all over the place but like 1200 hello Hello? Is this... What? Is this a motor or what? Oh my... God. This thing's gonna have like one horsepower still. Because it's gonna have no torque. But it's got such high RPM. So like, maybe something. Alright. Let's just try it again. Let's go... Let's, we're just gonna keep going until it starts going like dramatically down. 45 degrees so far was like really the highest, I feel. Now it's going back down. Now, see, now it doesn't seem like... Oh, maybe not. 1200. I lied. It's 12... Jesus. Oh my god. It peaked over there at 11. It's, it's, I feel like we're getting close to that top point. Seems like 45 was better. Let's just go to 55 just to check. But I feel like 45 was better. Yeah, see, now it's too much. Now it's, now it's losing the speed again. 1100. It's not hitting those 12s. All right, let's try this at 45 degrees. That's insane that that's the offset. Like, like... That's so crazy that that's the offset it wants. It just, it, that doesn't make sense to me at all. But there's got to be, like, a delay in the signal going on. Or maybe because it's spinning so fast, the scrap mechanic, you know, physics changes. I don't really care. The machine doesn't lie. That's the beauty of using a dyno. We can actually just tweak these things. And when we build piston engines, same thing. We can just tweak little things on the engine and then make adjustments and uh, measure the direct results. So let's see what the torque is on this thing. It's going to be bad. I'm not expecting it to be good, but this is 45 degree. It almost, was it faster at 50? I'm not seeing those 1100 peaks. It almost seems faster at 50, right? 50? Yeah. Yeah, it's way better at 50. That went, that went up so high so fast. All right, let's let it stabilize a little bit. It jumps like, like crazy. Like, how is this? Yeah, like, look, 40, 100, 1400, 1800, 1900. It might be really hard to measure. I don't know how consistent the magnets are in this game for this to work, I think is the issue. The, like, you can, you can kind of tell from the particle effects that the magnets might not necessarily be great. We can also try this without this, um, this extra shaft piece I put in, so it removes these extra bearings. So I'll try it without that. But let's do a test right here while we've got it hooked up. 1000 RPM ish. I don't know. Let's see what we get. 
54 horsepower! Let's go! This engine has power! 751 newton meters of torque, 863 RPM, and 54 horsepower. This engine is 54 times more powerful than the first magnet engine I made. That's so awesome! I can't believe- what is it for foot pounds? 554, yeah, that would make sense. Unbelievable. I can't believe this works. 54 freaking horsepower. Let's reset. Let's try it again. Just do another test just to make sure. Let it spin up a little bit. You know, all right. 54 horsepower. That's so funny. Yeah, now it's going to change a little bit. Max power 59, 697 newton meters of torque. That is so freaking amazing. I can't believe this works. Oh, that's so cool. 54 horsepower. This one's 59. I can't- we made an engine with actual horsepower out of magnets. That's great. That's great. My car, it has like, what, 140? So I just need three of these and we'll get to one car. It's fantastic. But anyway, let's, let's just do a quick check just to make sure, you know, we can rule it all out. Um, I should actually- hold on a minute. Let me save this first to make sure that we're not, uh, we're not losing anything before I delete it all. Alright, so now let's just delete this shaft. I don't know how much this is going to change things. I know people were saying in the comments of the last video that, you know, bearings and scrap mechanic caused a bit of issues and blah, blah, blah. So maybe if we just do a straight line, that'll be better. We still obviously need the support bearings for the structure itself. But, um, you know, we can make this shaft. It probably can just weld right directly to this, no? Yeah, that's probably good enough. Perfect. All right. And then let's just weld these together again. I can't believe this thing puts out 54 horsepower. That's I was I was expecting like, when the last one put out one, I was like, all right, we're gonna get maybe two. Now obviously we did go crazy high in RPM, and RPM drives horsepower, right? Torque is different, but we got more torque out of this too. More torque, more horsepower, more everything. And the torque I think is because we're doing north and south, not just north, or not just repelling magnets like the other one. But the fact that we get 54 horsepower, uh, 59 on a different set. Let's see what this looks like. This looks like it's a much smoother. RPM curve. Oh, it really does. I feel like those bearings were really causing all the problems in terms of the shakiness, or at least not helping it. This looks so much smoother. Oh man, this thing's gonna generate power like crazy. All right, here we go. 73 horsepower! 1,000 RPM and horsepower! Oh my god, we're doing 73 horsepower! Let's go! Do it again! Come on, let's go! 73 horsepower! Let's see it! Let's see it! Better be 73. Better not, I think I broke it. No, there we go. 67 horsepower. That's amazing. That's, I can't believe this thing works. That's so good. That's, that's amazing how much power this magnet motor generates. All right, let's do a quick test. So that was 73 horsepower at 40, at 50. Let's try it at 45. Uh, and let's reset it. See if this generates any more power. This is a, probably a better test to actually do a full out run. So that was 74. Now there's a little bit of variance, obviously, you're going to have with like scrap mechanic physics, things like that, but... I mean, still. Wow, way, way less. That did not peak. 58 peak. Let's try it again. 64 horsepower. Wow. Yeah, I mean, there's a little bit of inconsistency, obviously, but, like, dang, that's so cool. 54 freaking horsepower at 1,400 RPM. I can't believe it. 1,200 RPM now. That's so good. 62 horsepower at that time. This is ridiculous that this works. All right, let's put a tremble gear in between it. Because obviously that's that's the thing that we all want to... I should have probably not done that. But anyway, let's uh, let's throw a tremble gear in between it. We're going to do it at a 1 to 2. So we're going to have uh, this thing spin the small side of the tremble. And then we're going to output the big side. So we're going to step it up in terms of torque and not in terms of power. Um, like that. And we'll see what this does. This is great. This is so cool. You can just run all sorts of different engine configurations. And, like, we could put a piston engine here. We could put a magnet engine. We could put 15 transmissions in between. It doesn't matter. It's whatever you want to do. And the fact that you could just hook it into the dyno and see the direct results. Uh, this is the coolest. Coolest thing I've ever done. Oh, my God. That breaks the tremble. Yeah, there might be, there might be too much friction going on here. The average speed is uh, dropping significantly more than I would expect. It's like one quarter. Yeah, I think there's too much uh, scrap mechanic going on in this, in this right here. This RPM is, this is like a high RPM. Uh, wait a minute, I stepped this the wrong way. Oh, yeah, no, that's, that's, that's the problem. Whoops, I totally stepped this the wrong way. Yeah, that's right, because now we're spinning... 
Oh no, no, I stepped this the right way. Yeah, we're spending half. This is quarter. Yeah, no, we're good. It's just, it's just breaking. Just breaking sign. Anyway, let's see if we get more horsepower. I don't think we will. We might get a little bit more torque. 752. 751 newton meters of torque. We actually only went up like 200 newton meters of torque. That's the amount of friction difference. There's too much physics. There's too much physics going on here. We need to do some stuff that has real gears in it. Maybe we'll use a gear mod at some point. I know there's a ton of like mods that have gears and stuff, so we'll have to check some of that out as well. But uh yeah, this is this is ridiculous. I can't believe we built a 74 horsepower magnet motor compared to a one horsepower motor before this is insane like this is leaps and bounds ahead of where we were but anyway i'm gonna hook this back up of course let me know what you guys think in the comments down below this was uh someone i got a bunch of comments actually of people telling me to rebuild the magnet motor so i decided to take a look at it and uh, rebuild it so let me know what you guys think in the comments down below if you want me to build other cool stuff i gotta make a new piston engine at some point in time but uh, i thought it'd be neat to revisit the magic magnet motor and maybe we'll put this into a car um, but we need to figure out the transmission side of things. Obviously, we can't use the gear that we just had, and we need a differential to split the power into, and, uh, I really want to measure a differential on the dyno and see what the dyno outputs. But let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. Make sure you hit that like button, hit the subscribe button, and as always, I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and we'll see y'all next time. Man, it's so inconsistent. Now we're only at 51 horsepower. That's unfortunate. Wicked motor, though.